Hello everyone, and welcome back to some more Scrap Mechanic. So you might be wondering, why are you sitting on top of a giant eyeball? So recently I've been watching a lot of Minefield on YouTube, and I was really inspired by Season 3, Episode 3, uh, to do this video today. You see, in that video they actually built a visual cortex that can actually see and recognize numbers that are written down. And they did this entire brain out of people representing the neurons. So I thought that was really cool that in a football field, they actually created a brain that actually has intelligence. It can recognize things just like our brain does. So I thought that was really cool, and I thought that we can create something exactly like that in Scrap Mechanic. So over here, you can see that we actually have a giant eyeball. Over here is the giant eyeball. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can you can see all in the back with the optic nerves and the blood and everything. This is a giant. This is a giant eyeball. <laughs> uh, and here is our brain. And here you might have noticed that there is a, a number six over here. There's a number five over there, and there's a number nine over here. <laughs> six and that. Anyway, the brain is actually the thing that's. Uh, doing the recognizing. So whatever this eyeball actually looks at, it's going to try and recognize written patterns that we paint on the wall, anywhere that we paint it, as long as the eyeball is looking at it. If it can recognize the pattern, it will be able to identify what it's seeing. So right now the brain's not really looking at anything, so it's not really able to identify what, what's in front of it. So let's just go ahead and paint, uh, we're just gonna paint a number one. Bam, the brain understands that as a number one. Uh, let's go ahead and unpaint. Let's see, maybe we're gonna do this. And there we go, we just painted a seven, and the eyeball's looking at the number seven, and the brain identifies this. Yep, I see that as the number seven. So whenever the brain is uh, actually looking at stuff that it can't actually identify, like uh, like this stuff over here, we're just gonna paint like, I don't know, kind of an X. What is an, what, what is an X? What is an X? Not sure, we're not sure what an X is. Of course, in Scrap Mechanic, you can definitely program, like, if this block is painted, and this block is painted, and this block is painted, and this block is painted, then, you know, make the number logic over here output 5, right? That's not, uh, that's not a complicated thing to do, but we're gonna show you exactly how this works, because it works exactly like a real brain with real neurons. See, even if we take the eyeball and look over at a new target, it will identify number five. And so then if we go here, uh, set it all the way to 90, and there you go, you can see the brain identifies it as the number nine that it's looking at. Or if we go over here, set it to negative 90. Not sure, not sure, bam, identifies number six. This eyeball was made with the, uh, the, the test polygons, the new polygons that are a test pack right now. Um, just to get some of these like extra curves. It's not quite a sphere, but it's pretty pretty close to a sphere. Because they are RGB polygons, uh, the iris can change color very very easily. You don't have to paint it all yourself. Uh, you can just go over here, give your iris a new color, bam, it's applied to the eyeball. You want a pink eyeball? Bam, you got a pink eyeball. You want a brown eye? Look at my brown eye, guys. Everyone look at my brown Okay, don't take that out of context. But also there's just a switch over here that allows the eyeball to switch from a custom paint color to an RGB color. So just like that, we got RGB eye color. Because that's, that, you know, that's the latest craze, right? If you're building a new PC, you need to have RGB. So if, so if you're building a new eyeball, you need to have RGB. <laughs> anyway, anyway, let's put that back. Looking at the wall right here. And just like you saw, like you can paint anything that you want. So let's say you wanted to paint a number seven over here. Bam, number seven, it's still gonna identify it as a seven, even if you put a little bit of noise, like a little bit of a line through it, you can still identify that as a seven. Or, check this out, check this out. Let's say, We'll just clear all of it. Let's say we put a little bit of noise here, a little bit of noise here, and then bam, you draw a different kind of one all of a sudden. Bam, the brain still identifies this as most likely a one because it's not quite a seven like this is. See, this is more of a seven than it is a one. It's a little bit weird to think about and like, you know, this brain understands a little bit, but it doesn't understand a lot. So let's go ahead and show you how this eyeball visual cortex brain actually works. Just like real brains that fire neurons and eventually have to learn what they know, this brain is made up of a lot of logic aids. And all of these are vanilla logic aids. All, most of them are set to AND. 
Like, they, they're literally just functioning as a neuron that just fires on or off. And I think if you see the video from Minefield, their explanation for how the visual cortex actually works and processes character recognition, like seeing numbers and stuff, I think that's a really good explanation on how to see how this stuff works. So if you did see the video, immediately you can tell that, uh, like, wow, there's your V1 visual cortex, there's your V2, there's your V3, and there's your infra whatever cortex, right? Over here, where you convert what the number actually is to the thing that you actually send out to the brain. What you identified. Let's actually just show you how it works with an example here. Uh, we're gonna paint the number... Oh, I don't know. We'll paint the number two. Or three. Because we can just do three like that. But we can also just do two like that. Anyway, two and three are a good example. Uh, you can see it just goes right here to some logic gates. You can see there's a 5x5 five five grid of pixels. So this section of V1, you can probably tell it has it's checking for horizontal line segments on the grid right here. So you can see there's one horizontal line segment, two horizontal line segment, and three horizontal line segments. So you can see right in the middle, three horizontal line segments, that's what it's checking for. And the other one, you can see it's checking for the vertical line segments, where it's one over to the top and the left, and bottom to the right. Well, I was, I was looking at it backwards, but here you can see there's the vertical and there's the vertical. So from the V1 layer, we have the line segments, and then the V2 layer is the one that actually combines them to get... <laughs> yeah, looking at the uh, network, it was a little bit of a pain in the butts to wire this thing, but hey, it's a lot of fun, it's a lot of fun, so... Uh, the V2 layer is actually what combines these things together to look for corners of a number. So when you see this, uh, from the back it looks like a 5, but obviously from the front it looks like a 2. So when you see this horizontal line segment plus a vertical line segment, it's a top right corner, right? Or if you were to look at this vertical segment and this horizontal segment down here, uh, then those two lines sort of form the bottom right corner, right? or this horizontal line segment and this vertical line forms like a top left corner, and the other two form like a bottom left corner. So this is a great analogy for how neurons can identify line segments and then how those line segments fits together into corners. And then of course, when we have the combination of all these corners and where they are, then we can actually start to form what some of the numbers are. And so over here, you can even see there's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. And so just like that, we're already starting to get some information from the other layer on what the number could be. But this isn't the final layer because sometimes we get some conflicting data. Uh, like, let's go ahead and show you a backwards 9. A backwards 9 is just not sure, not sure of anything. We're not sure of what the answer So what is the brain actually doing here? Uh, well, you can see there's a bunch of neurons fired, a bunch of neurons fired, and here it seems to have identified it as a number one and a number two at the same time. Yeah, yeah, that kind of makes sense. We see the existing number two, and we also see the number one that just goes right through it. So we can see that it does identify the shapes correctly, right? It, it is exactly a one and a two overlapped on top of each other. But then this layer is actually the intelligent bit that has to actually decide what we're actually looking at. This is the part that actually recognizes what we're looking at. And because it is both a one and a two at the same time, the brain's like, wait a second, that's not a number. So number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, and zero are all not turned on because it's a pattern that's not recognizable. A number one plus a number two, it doesn't register as most likely any other number. So what we are registering is unknown. The, the question mark, unknown, we're not sure. We're not sure what, what we're looking at. And this is the signal that's getting sent out to the memory, to the brain, to the output. We're getting not sure. So if we were to actually connect the pattern here so that the brain can actually identify the eight, let's actually show you. Eight is a little bit of a special case because uh, there's no, like there's so many other numbers hidden inside of it, right? The number one is hidden inside of it. The number five is hidden inside of it. The number six is hidden inside of it. The number seven, the number zero, right? The number three, number eight is every number puts together. It fires every neuron almost in like a consistent pattern. See, look at this. It identified every single number. Every number is inside the number eight, but 
thanks to this layer, thanks to the final layer, we can actually identify, yeah, when their brain is actually thinking all the numbers are there. No, 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 no. That's just a number eight that we're looking at. And that's how you can send out, bam, a number eight. And so then for those wondering, uh, this is the memory panels. Like this is actually the memory, what you recall. So when the brain's seeing the number eight, uh, you have to actually remember what, it, you know, what the name of it is. So I put in memory slot eight, Bam, the name for the number eight. <laughs> uh, you identify visual patterns just from what we paint on the wall, thanks to the sensors in the eyeball. And then from those visual patterns, we identify line segments and corners to identify what number, what symbol it actually is. So from the processing, uh, we just recognize the number that we already know. Like, oh yeah, that's the number four, right? And then you send out the number four. Bam, brain says number four. Just like this. Number four. You can see there, like, even with a little bit of noise in the image, it'll still do its best to identify number four. <laughs> it, like, that's that's great, because, like, y you ask a human, even a human will be like, what number is that most likely? They might get very, very confused because their more complex brains are trying to identify more complex images. But if you think very simply, that's still most likely a four, right? So our brain is doing a very good job here. That's super cool. And just like this, like, you can put it off to the side. It doesn't matter which, it doesn't matter which sensors are activated, right? We can do it there, or we can do it here. Bam, it's a four, right? Or, you know, just like I put the five off to the side. So how I'm thinking on how we can actually expand on this idea a little bit, uh, it would be really, really cool if this eyeball was on a camera controlled rig and I could just like point, uh, besides just like looking left and right, uh, point up and down and like just look at stuff, right? Look at stuff all over with camera controls. And you know, depending on what I'm looking at, the pattern that I'm looking at, it'd be super cool to be able to like look around also vertically too and uh, point to like any symbol like up there. Like if I were to paint, like if I were to paint a zero up there and if I could actually turn and make the eyeball look at the zero and trigger the sensors to form a zero, uh, then I would actually be able to, I, I have a working eyeball, I have a working eyeball, so. Yeah, and that's all that there is to show really. It's, uh, it's just this one build that was really, really inspired from the Minefield episode. I highly recommend you go check out, if you haven't already seen the Minefield series, start right at the beginning, season one, episode one. As a matter of fact, I would highly recommend everyone just, if you even if you've already seen it, go watch it again, especially with what's going on in the world. Take the time to be a little bit more mental. Um, not go crazy. <laughs> not go crazy, but like just to be a little bit more mindful of a few things. And I think it's actually, I think it's a good thing. I think it's all a good thing, so. There's a lot of interesting stuff, a lot of interesting videos. Definitely check out the Minefield series. And of course, I'm going to leave a link to the uh, specific video that inspired this episode. So yeah, there's really not that much to show. It's just the eyeball and it's just the, uh, the, the brain. Exactly how they did in the Minefield series, where all of the neurons are from this 5x5 five five grid retina. And from there, beepity beepity boop, neural processing recognizes what the number actually is. And it's amazing that it doesn't even have to be centered in place. Like over here, I'm gonna paint a number three, and you can see it's to the left of the retina, but it still recognizes number three. And even if I were to put it all the way over to the right, it, with an extra wide three, <laughs> uh, we don't need it to be that long, but like you can see, it still recognizes number three. See, even, even when the same visual pattern is over to the right, or if it's in the center, or if it's over to the left, the, the visual pattern is still processed by the brain's visual cortex to recognize visual patterns. I think that's an amazing analogy for how brains actually work, and I think that's super, super cool. Definitely worth checking out the Minefield video. I mean, if those videos actually inspired me to build a working brain in Scrap Mechanic, it's definitely worth watching. Are you kidding me? It's dead. <laughs> so I had a lot of fun building this brain. Of course, you guys let me know what you think down in the comments below. I do think that there is the possibility that we might be able to improve this design in the future. Maybe we can use an even larger retina display, more than five by five. Uh, because now that I understand how this brain structure thing actually works, um, it's, 
it, it's within my ability to create other brains like this. I think it's uh, it's such a fascinating thing to learn, and I think that's super cool. And now I have more of a reason to actually use vanilla logic again. <laughs> that's... Well, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys found this stuff as interesting as I did because I'm having a lot of fun building actual brains in Scrap Mechanic. That's super cool. And I'll see you guys in the next one.